I'm not gonna lie to you guys, today's keyboard is pretty run of the mill, but don't get me wrong, it's packed with features. Stop me if you've heard this before. 2.4 GHz wireless, Bluetooth wireless connecting up to multiple devices, hot swap with 3 and 5 pin switches, RGB lighting, and a little volume encoder knob up in the corner. Yeah, if you've been keeping up with the channel and watching all my keyboard reviews, you might recognize all those features from a lot of the keyboards I reviewed throughout 2022. This is all good stuff, but it's just that as more and more of these features become standard, keyboards that have these features that would have been exciting a year or two ago become less exciting and are just more standard and again, run of the mill. Forgive me, I'm, I'm being rude. I didn't even introduce you guys yet. This is the LTC Nimbleback NB831. Really just rolls off the tongue. By the way, thank you to LTC for sending this keyboard in for review. Uh, that does not affect my opinion in any way. I've actually reviewed a couple LTC keyboards in the past. I reviewed the Neon 75 very recently, and a year or two back I reviewed the Nimbleback... Um, can't even remember that it's another one of these number letter names it's this one right here i reviewed that one that one got some views and people like that keyboard and i did as well i gave that keyboard a lot of praise and that's because it was so cheap and i liked the form factor it's a fairly still uncommon 65 percent form factor and in fact it had a lot of features that this keyboard has that keyboard was about 45 dollars so why did i praise that keyboard but harp on this one well, that's because this one is over double the price. It retails at $99.99, but every time I look at it on Amazon, it's on sale for $89.99, so it's about 90 bucks. It's available in black or white. It's in a 75% layout. It's kind of in this exploded 75% layout, as I like to call it, where the arrow keys and the other little keys on the side are separated from the rest of the keyboard. It comes with all your standard bells and whistles. You've got a cable, you've got switch pullers, keycap pullers, a manual, a usual. You got a USB port on the back, rubber feet on the bottom, two dual level pop-out feet for varying height adjustment, and nibble back branding in the front. If it isn't obvious, this very much goes after that audience that wants that GMMK Pro look. In fact, this board is nice if you want that GMMK Pro look, but don't have that GMMK Pro money. Out of the box, it comes with red linear Huano switches, which are okay. So many boards in this style and price range these days are coming with Gateron Pro switches, which really are very cheap kind of budget priced switches, which are factory loomed by the way. They sound and feel great and punch way above their weight. You can probably get enough switches to cover this board for about another $15 or $20. Probably around the same price range realistically as the Wano switches, maybe a little bit more. So I don't understand why other than maybe like manufacturing reasons, contractual reasons, why a company like this would choose Wano switches over those factory lubed Gateron Pro switches. That's just my opinion. I'm sure there's more to it. I'm sure there's a lot of factors in the background as to why that decision was made. It just seems like a weird decision to me as a uh, as a spoiled little fanboy who likes those pre-lubed switches. The keycaps, also pretty standard. They're your normal shine through keycaps that you'd find on a lot of boards out there. It looks clean, it looks nice. And they also opted not to include sub legends for secondary layers and functions and whatnot, which I'll give them a hand for that. I like this more minimalist kind of sleek look that this gives you. The stabilizers also just kind of sound like stabilizers that you would find in a standard budget Amazon keyboard like this one. And yeah, they just don't sound great. They just sound like stabilizers that don't have any lube or any tuning. The stabilizers are plate mounts, so everything's a nice quick fix there if that's something you want to do. These are all added costs on top of an already $90 keyboard. It's a little harder to justify doing those extra little steps to make the board sound better compared to a $45 keyboard like the previous version. I don't understand why this one is so much more expensive than the previous board other than maybe inflation or maybe because it has the encoder knob. And again, I don't remember if the previous one had Bluetooth or not. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. And I'm certainly not gonna look it up. <laughs> you can reprogram the encoder knob in the software. The software is totally free and you can just download it from Nimbleback's website. But there's more options than I would have thought there would be. At least it's not just a volume knob if you want to do some other things. You can do like the mouse wheel and so on. The software itself is a lot of what we've seen before, but again, not in a bad way at all. You can change keys, program key layers. You've got up to four layers, by the way. Adjust your lighting, program macros, and more. You can even adjust key sensitivity from one to 10 with one being the default. 
I haven't played around with it and I don't know how well it works. I personally think the keys are fine where they are at level one. So it's up to you if that's something you want to try to experiment with. I don't usually do this, but I've actually been putting the wireless mode and battery through its paces with this board. And the battery life seems to be pretty good. I've been using the 2.4 GHz wireless mode and not the Bluetooth mode at all. 2.4 GHz wireless actually usually consumes more battery than Bluetooth because it just takes more power. And I've had the RGB on the entire time, which again, takes more power. If you were to use this in Bluetooth mode without any of the lighting, I think the battery would last a very long time. But so far, I've been using it consistently as my only keyboard for a couple of weeks now. Last week, I was editing a video for like four, three to four hours a day after work, did not plug it in at all, and I still haven't plugged it in. I just checked it before recording this, and it looks like it's at about roughly 50%. It does help conserve battery life by going to sleep fairly quickly. By default, I think it's at around two minutes. This is nice, and it's a helpful function, especially if you do want to conserve that battery life. My only little annoyance is if I'm watching a video and I want to adjust the volume, if the keyboard's asleep, the volume knob does not work. I have to press another key on the keyboard, usually I'll just pause the video and hit resume, and then adjust the volume afterwards. It's a small annoyance, but it's one that happened so often throughout my time using it that I feel like I want to complain about it. You can adjust the amount of time it takes for the keyboard to fall asleep in the software as well. So would I recommend purchasing this keyboard if you're looking for something just like this? Yes and no. And if it sounds like this is not a shining review, again, I'm not saying that this is a bad keyboard. If you're already looking at this keyboard as an option and it's checking off all of the boxes for you as far as what you want in a keyboard, Great, I don't think you're going to be disappointed if this does everything that you want it to do. It's loaded with features that a couple years ago would have come at a premium, and that's nothing to sneeze at. Alright, that's going to do it for this review. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this keyboard, you want to pick it up, it will have an affiliate link in the description for you guys to pick it up and purchase, and the money, a little bit of money will come kick back toward the channel, which will further things like um, other stuff. I don't know what I'm saying. It's really, it's really early and my throat is getting dry. I'm out of here. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to watch another video, I've got a couple here and you can click here on my face to subscribe. All right, I'm out.